Welcome to Release Day. I'm Alex Heward. There are many roads that lead us to where we are in our lives. While only at the beginning of her musical career, Nicole Haber has traversed plenty. Creativity is at the center of her makeup, not just as a means to express her emotions, but as a way of healing. Nicole has such an infectious personality and enthusiasm for life, you would never know when talking to her that she spent 10 years quietly battling depression. Since courageously seeking professional help, Nicole has worked with DJs all over the world, using her voice to reach a global audience all too familiar with her message. She understands the need for those suffering to know, you're not alone. We all have roadmaps to our dreams, but if there's anything we can take away from the year 2020, it's how our journey can take a hard turn. Perhaps it's time we took a moment to learn from being careless. If we're careless, if we play, we'd be happier, wouldn't you say? If we stopped and I was going through a breakup at the time, so I was trying to just find peace and find happiness. And basically the words just came from living carelessly. I was living actually in a little town called Lakefield. And uh, I had to come to Toronto for, a, for like a songwriting session. I was walking to the bus station. All of a sudden, like lyrics started to kind of flush in about like seeing people on a daily basis and, and feeling similar you know, knowing that everybody kind of has the same emotions and the same feelings when you strip everything down and get to the raw emotion or the raw feeling. It was originally, I think, if we're careless, if we're free, uh, we'd be happier, wouldn't we be? And then I was like, no, we'd definitely be happier. So it turned into more of a definitive. How did you start working with DJs? When I first did my EP Vibes, I wasn't planning on making music. Like that was not I was into musical theater and film like that was what I was going to do. And and then I wrote my EP and it just it was so awesome. It felt so good. And as soon as we released it, I, I promoted as much as I could. Like I felt like such a rock star for the first time. And, you know, you know how you get those random DMs in your Instagram? I started to get a lot of messages being like, hey, I'm a DJ from India. Hey, I'm a DJ from the Netherlands. Hey, I'm a DJ from Boston. Like, I, I heard your song and I and I love your vocals. Like, do you do that? I instantly said yes, because you never say no. You always say yes. <laughs> and it ended up being something that I actually enjoyed. And now I frequently work with DJs because I've my music has been heard in over 50 countries. So let's talk a little bit about when you when you go into releasing it. Do you have um I guess if you can outline the process when it comes to that, um, you know, the timeline from production to release, do you sit down and have and, and take a look at, I'm recording this date, which means it's going to be done by this date, marketing this date, release this date? The actual production process always is different. So Careless didn't, it took a while. Like I, I it, we said we wanted to release it, I think, before the end of 2019. Like we originally were like, yeah, we'll get it out really, really soon. And we had all the vocals. We had all the mixing. We had everything done. And I was like, so what's going on? Like, are we releasing this song? What's happening? And they're like, we're doing a lot of stuff on our end. We're trying to see if we can get a label to sign it. We're trying to see if we can, you know, find people to remix it and do all of these things so that we're not frantically looking after we release it. I didn't even know that we were doing remixes. I didn't even know that they were sending it to people. Like I, I was on YouTube looking up my song and I see like 10 different reaction videos to my song. And they, I asked them, I'm like, do you know about these? And they're like, yeah, we sent, we sent it to a bunch of YouTubers hoping that they would do that. It, it's, it's a fun little surprise when I get to hear all these remixes of my voice, which I've never heard. I don't think anybody's ever done that for me. And every time I work with a DJ, it's always new. Every single person has their own strategy. When I find out, I'm like, okay, that's, that's staying here because I'm going to look into that when I go into my solo work. Can you, can you talk a little bit about how the current pandemic is, is affecting you as an artist? This this has actually been a, a good experience for me. And I, I encourage people to kind of change their mindset on how they're looking at this. Everybody always says, I wish there was more time in the day. I wish that, you know, I could do this or I could have the time to learn this. And you're finally getting that time. You're finally like I'm sitting at home 
making music all day. And this is like, I feel like a full-time musician now. I'm getting paid to sit here and make music and, and, and learn new skill sets and new things. When before it was, you know, I'm an artist who does her thing and it almost felt more of a hobby than a career because I, it, it wasn't like I was just doing music. I have so many opportunities at my fingertips that I didn't even think about before all this stuff went down. So many. And, you know, with the concept of, you know, doing a lot of things for self-help, like it's a healing kind of feeling where, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm doing something for myself and, it, and there's a, such a sense of pride. You know, music was always a healer. Music was always an outlet. And I encourage if somebody has an outlet to use that as what it is and what they need it to be. Because sitting and writing a song let all of my emotions out. And basically that trapped feeling that was inside of me would always come out. You will never be alone because somebody has felt that way before. There's always somebody that is inspired by you. If we stopped and turned